What's up? My name is Josh. This is going to be my review of the Uncivilized Sneaker, the Knees Over Toes Guy shoe. In this video, we're going to talk about the shoe, the unboxing, the fit, how it works in training, how it compares to a regular basketball shoe, the durability, the longevity. I'm going to go over all the things that I love about this shoe. And your reason to watch to the end is because I'm definitely going to be going over some of the things that have literally broken and ripped on this shoe and that are just unacceptable. So let's get into it. I ordered this shoe when it came out in January and it is May now of 2023. So that's been about five months of use. I've only wore the shoe working out, so for me that means playing basketball and lifting. All right, the unboxing experience. The design of the shoe is good, it's minimal, it's black and white, it goes with everything. It's what I like, it's not flashy, it's not the center of attention, it doesn't look bad either, it doesn't look dumb, it looks it looks like a shoe, it's great. Comfort and fit, so the shoe comes in only whole sizes, and for me, my size in Nike and basketball shoes and everything is nine and a half. They said to size up, so I got a size 10. Very initial impressions, I like the way it feels on my foot. I think it's a little bit big for me. So it feels locked in around the heel, locked in like on the top of my foot. That feels okay. The width that my toes spread in it feels like it's giving me the right amount. So I'm debating if I want to like wear an extra pair of socks or a smaller pair of socks inside this, if that would feel better. So for me, when I'm wearing the shoe with a thin pair of socks, it feels a little too wobbly, a little too roomy. The toe box is wide. That's definitely a pro of the shoe, how it fits in the toe. Your toes and your feet can really spread out and grip the ground in a very natural way. They don't feel like they're crammed into a shoe, which is like one of the main selling points of the shoe. That's probably one of the reasons you're interested in it because of this kind of wide look that it has. But that feel though, if you're not exactly the size it's supposed to be, can be like, oh, is it too loose for me? My solution was sometimes I'll wear two pairs of socks. Sometimes I'll make sure it's a thicker pair of socks and always make sure to tie it tightly so that this part, I, I'm not a shoe reviewer, like this part, the part that's not your toes, the upper part of your foot is tight and secure. And then the fit should be good while giving you enough space in the toes. They have a strap that you strap in to help with that secured feeling. And when they're on the foot, they kind of almost feel like just a, a sock, like a sock with reinforcements, like a sock that you can't feel like you're wearing a shoe, but you have that solid support of a flat bottom that's connected to the ground. So far the shoes feel really good. I can really like feel that I'm making contact with the ground, if that makes sense. They don't feel too big. They feel like I have just enough space for my toes and stuff. And like, I, I feel like I'm very under control with my foot. Like, it feels like I'm not wearing shoes, you know? But it feels like I have like the, the traction and the protection still of shoes, which, is awesome. How the sole feels, that's another big pro of the shoe. It's very flat, now, there's no arch or anything. It feels the same way inside the shoe, which is something that I like. When I'm lifting, I wanna feel flat and connected to the ground. Like the force being applied through my body into the ground feels one-to-one -to, -one to the ground. And sometimes shoes can affect that. If there's like foam and cushion and stuff, I don't wanna feel like if I'm moving laterally and that lands that the foam could, like my foot could squish over the edge of the foam and roll my ankle. That's like not a good lifting shoe. That's why I and many other people are of the opinion that lifting shoes should not be that kind of foamy supportive feeling to the bottom of them. So the sole for this shoe, very flat, very one to the ground feeling. And that is what I like. That is what I prefer. And the traction is really good too. It's like a, it's like a basketball shoe. It's got kind of herringbone, like zigzag pattern. Definitely not slipping or anything. So a quick note on basketball. I wouldn't wear this shoe as a basketball shoe. Sometimes when I'm traveling and I need one shoe that I'm gonna work out in and play basketball in, it's acceptable for that to me because I only wanna pack like one pair of shoes. If I happen to play basketball, that's okay too. But when I'm at home and I'm looking just to play basketball, I will wear actual basketball shoes. Yeah, I feel a little bit more locked down in my actual basketball shoe. I have like a, a pretty low profile basketball shoe regardless and this almost is just a little bit too thin a little bit too like the whole shoe folds over while i'm planting really hard the traction's really really good maybe if you fit true to size in a 10 it would it would work i usually wear nine and a half and it felt just a little bit too big to play basketball in but i'm definitely going to keep just lifting in them because they feel super super solid for that okay so this is just my current basketball shoes they're they're like the nike i don't know they're just some default nike shoe that's not a signature shoe or anything and the thing that makes them better is i think the lockdown around my entire foot is better than the knees over toe shoe and that's because i think it can be more true to size the laces don't come undone the laces come undone on the i'll get to that in the negatives but i just feel that an actual basketball shoe locks me down better it provides better like impact support you do want a little bit i think of cushion that a basketball shoe provides but in my opinion the types of basketball shoes that i wear i still want that same kind of traction and feel one-to-one -to, -one to the ground that i described when lifting with the shoe i want that out of my basketball shoe too really it is acceptable as a basketball shoe but if you have basketball shoes already, that's the thing. I would probably just wear the basketball shoes. But if it's your only option, 
it does work. Okay, so we've covered the performance, the feel, the stability, the functionality, how it looks. Now let's get to the negatives. So the biggest thing that happened is this part of the shoe, the part that the laces go into that's connected to the body of the shoe, on my shoe has just completely ripped off and been and disconnected from the body of the shoe. Ripped, secure. So this, how this affects it is that when I go and tie the shoes and I tighten them up, which is like I said, the most important thing, locking down this area of the shoe, when I tighten them up, it doesn't tighten that part of the shoe for me. So it can be still more loose feeling than it already was which kind of, for me, unfortunately, exacerbates like the main drawback of the shoe, which was the tightness and the lockdown. There's the busted one. And then here it is connected all the way up. The lockdown of this area up here is just not as good on this foot anymore, unfortunately, which like I said, is already for me, the main drawback of the shoe. So it's something right now that's acceptable still for the shoe. It still feels solid on the ground. It still feels like it has a good enough support fit around my foot. But unfortunately, I do think it's something that's just gonna keep getting worse and worse. I don't know if I could send it back, get it repaired, take it to a shoe a cobbler. <laughs> But definitely, you know, that's kind of what you sign up for when you're getting this shoe. I kind of knew coming into it, I'm getting a first generation shoe. I'm getting a prototype. I'm on the ground floor. I'm gathering information about the shoe and what happened to it. So that in the future, I can contribute to being one step closer to a perfect shoe. Kind of sucks, $150 shoe. That's what happened, but I guess that's how I'm justifying it. If you got any extras though, uncivilized, a size 10 right foot, send me a DM, I'll send you my address. Another negative, the laces themselves I found come undone. I might replace them with a puffier lace or a flat lace but they're just kind of like a circular, really thin shoelace, which just comes undone for me. And I think I tie some pretty good knots. The fact that they come undone was notable to me. Do I recommend the shoe? When it comes down to it, I actually don't know. I mean, I've been wearing these really beat to shit, like torn up, flat shoes working out in the gym for forever. Since high school, probably like 12, 15 years I've been wearing these shoes and it's they've done fine, you know? It's the same thing. It locks up my foot enough, the laces stay tied and it's super flat and that's kind of it. So if you want to support the movement of this shoe, which I did, that's why I bought it. I wanted to contribute, be in on the ground floor of this new kind of shoe and support knees over toes and that whole like movement, which I benefited so greatly from. I was happy to support this shoe, you know, I spend my money there in hopes that it eventually became an even better shoe. But if you don't like have that mindset or don't want to spend 150 bucks, definitely just get a shoe like this. And I think that would be fine as well.